I first learned about love at the foot of my mother's ironing board as we watched the soaps each day, triggering my penchant for crushes. Before love was dreamy, Adam Drake, the strawberry blonde attorney on the edge of night. Love was that one soulmate out there. Away from the TV screen, I set out to practice with my male cousins, but I couldn't catch one after Christmas dinner that year. At five, love was Bobby Fanning, my husband in the kindergarten playhouse, until my mother got a call from school that I was spending too much time at the game. Now in Catholic school, at seven, love was Douglas McGinley, who my pal Irene chased down so I could kiss him, but he fell off a wall in the pursuit and had to be rushed to the hospital. <laughs> I ended up getting my first kiss from Irene's younger brother, Alfie. At 10, I started collecting Ben Burroughs' poems from the Philadelphia Daily News. He captured love so eloquently. I amassed a fat collection. I also fell in love with music. Love was Paul McCartney and Davy Jones. Love grew elusive as I hit my teens. I fell for a lot of guys named Michael, Italian, Irish, a military Mike nicknamed Jake, before I realized that I had really bad luck with mics. At 17, from afar, I fell in love with police, Italy, the land of my grandparents. I studied the language at night, skipped the ritual senior week at the Jersey Shore, spent three glorious weeks connecting with cousins in a brutal. That summer, love was Rinaldo, the hottest looking guy I'd ever seen. I felt beautiful in Italy. I even felt taller. I loved the cafes, the outdoor markets, how men adored women. Now I had a destination, a mission. At 23, I started writing poetry and fell more in love with music and the men that made it, especially bass players like Dan. They turned me on to Weather Report, King Crimson, local bands. Dan eventually became my fiance, but I never felt engaged. And I began to abhor the suburbs. So in my late 20s, armed with a master's in international business, I accepted a job in Milan, and I romanced Italy. I found my cafe for the ritual morning coffee. Life was exotic weekends away with new friends. My male friends called me their diva. My dry cleaner called me dottoressa. I had respect, superb food and wine, a lucrative reporting career. But where was the love? I confirmed that Italian men were super passionate about women. Their mothers. I serial dated, well dressed, vain, sexually confused Mamoni. Cross cultural marriages seemed doomed. I swore off Italians and headed to New York City, the place where my father was born. Love was there. I found it in Chelsea with a neighbor, another bass player. Jim made New York sing. But after giving the near end of my childbearing years to a chronically late lover who sold books on the street, I joined a cool gym and took back my life. As the clock I barely heard ticked, I tried online dating at an aunt's urging. It was fun and funny, but it's a business. For years, my mother told me to put more energy into my career. Maybe I should have listened. Then she suffered a massive stroke and I became the only caregiver who cared. Ran back and forth to Philly, got embroiled in a guardianship battle with siblings. After our mother's passing, I divorced family and swore off legal commitments. On a bright note, today, guys from 21 to 82 hit on me. The 50-year-olds are as disrespectful as the 30-year-olds, so I choose young. <laughs> Last year, I dated a guy I now call the buffoon. I fell in luck with a musician lawyer, but it wasn't love. I have some ideas what is. Love's no longer a dance or a drug. Love isn't one soul. Love is my six-year-old nephew's laughter. Love is still writing and sharing poetry. Love is me. Last year, I finally tossed the Ben Burroughs love poem stash, 
see for one. It starts out, Mother, let me gently hold you. Mm -hmm. 